All right, y'all. So I am back and we have another health news article debunked for you today. This article is from New York Post. Quote, IUD for men shows positive results on par with vasectomy in early trials. So this article, I learned something new because I had no idea that they were working on kind of a, you know, less invasive uh, form of vasectomy, but it turns out they're working on several of these. So the article is about one that's called Adam, which I personally find to be a little bit blasphemous for my taste since it's definitely, you know, disrupting God's design for how the male body is supposed to work but that's just me. Um, so they're calling this a first of its kind, a water soluble hydrogel that significantly reduces sperm motility and concentration similar to vasectomy. Uh, and Contraline CEO Kevin Einsfrat says that he is thrilled about this new product. So basically what they are doing with this Adam product is they are injecting this hydrogel that is supposed to be water soluble into the vas deferens. So they actually have to puncture the person's scrotum and feed this gel in via, I believe, a catheter. And it's going to plug the vas deferens with the hydrogel for a total, from what I researched, of about two years is what they're believing before it's going to just kind of naturally dissolve on its own and fertility would be then restored. However, they're just undergoing these clinical trials now, so I don't think we have any way of knowing how that's really going to go, how long it's gonna last, if any permanent damage is caused to the vas deferens, or if there is a chance that the hydrogel is going to, you know, maybe absorb early. Um, so they are hoping that the long, this is a long-term male birth control kind of on par with an IUD and that it will be 99% effective. They did test it on 23 men. I believe this was in Australia, ages 25 to 65, and they found a 99 to 100% reduction in uh, sperm motility and concentration similar to vasectomy within 30 days. All right, so I did actually look this up and like I said, I think I might have mentioned this already, they're working on several other different types of, you know, hydrogels or like one I think is kind of like a plug inserted into the vas deferens, but these are all kind of trying to mimic vasectomy but without the actual like sur surgical intervention. Very interesting and we will have to see what happens with this, but to me, whenever the body is significantly altered or we're wanting to, you know, inject something into it that doesn't belong there or make it work in a way that it wasn't made to work, we're always going to probably see, you know, risk of problems, risk of issues, and um, just an overall change in how the body functions. So... What are some other ways that a man can control his fertility or that a couple can control their fertility together? Um, I'm going to talk to you all about a few. So number one, we of course have abstinence. I know this one's not popular, but if you aren't looking to have a baby, then you know sometimes abstinence can be the best route to go. Um, number two, we have um, another option that also, like abstinence, protects you from not just pregnancy, but um, also things like STIs, STDs, and that would be using condoms. Number three, um, we have obviously the woman could use female birth control or an IUD. I don't really subscribe to that because just like the male version, I think it um, damages the body, especially in the case of hormones, and the IUDs have caused many, many issues. Um, including for people like myself who had tried to use a non-hormonal IUD and ended up with painful ovarian cysts as a result. Um, so number four is a great method that we can look at, which is the, um, the counting and the tracking, the ovulation method, uh, coupled with you know abstinence when the woman is ovulating, or you can even pair this with like, you know, say the pullout method. So that would mimic 
what is more natural, a more natural design. It goes in line with your physiology. No one's being sur surgically altered or altered in um, you know, a hormonal way or anything like that. So that would probably be my best uh, recommendation for what is safest for preserving the body overall will still be able to enjoy sexual relationships with your partner. But like I said, if we go back to number one, it's always important that you have to keep in mind, you know, these relationships can result in a baby. And if there's a case of lack of trust, they could result in an STD. So you always want to make the choice that is best suited for yourself. Um, but yeah, I found this article pretty interesting. The links that we'll go to to do, you know, different things like, um, you know, not have a baby and still have sexual relationships are pretty vast. You know, if we're willing to do things all the way to the point of like, you know, placing an IUD, being on hormones and having our hormones disrupted, or in this case, having a experimental hydrogel inserted into your vas deferens. At a certain point, we have to think about, you know, as humans, how, what lengths are we willing to go to, to do these things? And should we respect our bodies, you know, to a much greater extent? I think that we should. Um, but I found, I did find this article interesting and I'm hoping that there aren't too many long-term effects. I also hope that they don't start to market it with this idea that it's going to not have long-term effects, be totally fine, and then men end up with, you know, a secondary infertility later because it doesn't actually reverse the way that they want it to or because some people get scarring or some type of other issue with their vast difference. And um, that could even become a case where would they need like a surgical procedure to then go in and clear it out. We just don't know. This is a new technology. Um, but I hope you all found this video helpful. I hope you found it interesting. Always, always, always take in mind whenever you choose a medical product, medical procedure, surgical intervention, anything like that, the downsides, the possible downsides and what can happen to you if you, you know, choose to do something and maybe they didn't fully explain the possible um, you know, adverse outcomes, adverse risks, or maybe they don't even know them yet. But we always want to kind of search our mind and think about like, what are these scenarios that can happen and then decide what we can live with before we allow ourselves to be kind of pushed or, um, you know, like sold on one of these new, especially new medical interventions. Um, all right. So I hope you all, like I said, found this video helpful. If so, please go ahead and hit subscribe and give this video a like. And if you have any other health topics you'd like me to talk about or videos, please feel free to reach out to me over on Instagram or Twitter. Otherwise, I will be back with more health news soon. Have a fantastic day.